In this video, we will turn parts of a 3D printer into this. Thanks to PCP Wave for sponsoring this video, more about them later. This project started as a challenge for a contest where all the gear used should be on a budget friendly limit. And I wanted to shoot a short film, but I don't like static shots and I don't have friends. But I had an old 3D printer and 3D printers are like robots. And if it can make parts, why not operate the camera? I didn't win the contest, but I got a comment from Gerald on Dan. And I remembered his detailed review of motion control systems from Rhino and Edel Chrome that both are really expensive, so I decided to make this video that the budget goes below $400. There are other projects like this one, but many of them require complex coding, hundreds of hours of 3D printing, or strange hardware parts. I try to keep all those parts easily to get on a regular hardware store, and many of these parts are very common nowadays because they work as a replacement for 3D printers, and the 3D printer's parts required are small and simple to print. And I tried to keep the coding part as simple as just an a click and an upload button. Building this Foraxis camera controller is like building a Lego kit. We will start mentioning the parts. You can find a detailed list in the description below. Most of these parts are from a 3D printer I don't use anymore, but you can buy them pretty easily online, like these aluminum extrusions used in the 3D printer structure. I cut them in two lengths, 7 inches and 8 inches. You can cut them easily using a hacksaw. First, we will need to attach the plates into the stepper motor for each axis. For this part, you have to notice that one plate will be higher than the other. We will use M3x10 screws. And remember to align the higher plates on the same side when attaching them to the extrusions. Then we will attach the bearing for the axis on each motor plate. For this you will need to create new holes with a drill and a quarter bit. Then we can assemble the bearing and motor to the extrusions using M5 T-nuts. Just place the T-nut inside the extrusion and use an M5 by 8 screw to secure it. We will speed up this part of the video, you can find a detailed assemble manual in the description below. Once assembled, we insert the 8mm steel rod into the bearings and we put the gear and the support. But before you have to tap the support with a quarter inch to any tap, this is the same screw size as the camera uses. Then we can secure the gears and the support and finally we put the GT2 belt and tension it moving the motor plate and secure it. That's it, we have our fan axis, and now we repeat this process for the tilt axis. Then we join both axes with these right angle plates. And finally, we attach our L plate and camera plate to the tilt support. And we have our pan tilt camera controller. So now we will assemble the track or slider axis. For this, we will need a motor plate, a GT2 pulley for the motor, and two pulleys to keep the belt in track. You can attach these pulleys using some M3 screws to the motor mounting holes. And then you can attach the motor plate to your slider. As you noticed, I have a DIY slider, but many sliders have extra mounting holes on the sliding plate. Then you will need these two 3D printed parts to attach the belt on each end of the slider. Then you can put the belt around the pulleys and the motor gear and tension it. Finally, you can secure it with a clip. You can cut the excess belt if you won't use it in a longer slider. Now, let's talk about mainboard. These are the parts that move the motors of a 3D printer, and there are a lot of models, like this one. This is a ram's hat and an Arduino board. This is the most basic board for a 3D printer. This used to be the main board for all 3D printers and support the firmware we will use, but it is not a great option nowadays. Then we have this bit 3 tech SKR version white pump for turbo that is a faster board and can use the same drivers for the motor like the ramps. And then we have this big 3 tech SKR mini E3 version 2 that has the drivers soldered into the board. This makes the board smaller, but it has a disadvantage. If one driver gets damaged, it cannot be replaced easily, and it's just limited to four axes. So, I will recommend the SKR Turbo or the new SKR 3 board. All these boards have something in common, and it's a communication port. This is important, because we will place our controller in this port 
to make the 3D printer into a 4 to 5 axis motion controller. All the connection diagrams are in the description below. To program our board to use it as a motion controller, we need to copy the firmware bin file into a microSD card. Place the card into the board and wait for a minute or two so the new firmware is loaded. To confirm that the firmware was uploaded, take the microSD card and see if the bin file changed it to a CUR file. And now let's connect our motors, DC jack and jack ports. I added a TRRS board to use a headphone cable for the controller. This is optional, you can connect directly the cables if you want. And added a second TRRS board with an isolator to control the shutter of the camera for time lapse. Remember, you can download all the connections diagrams in the description below. Now let's build our controller. This is the main part of this project. We will need an ESP32 board, an OLED display and a joystick module. You can connect all these parts using these jumper cables and make some of them because we will need more than one connection for positive and negative and follow the connection diagrams. But there is a better way. You can order some custom PCBs. These custom PCBs are made by PCBWay. They offer a great PCB prototype service and other services like 3D printing. You can easily order these PCBs by uploading the Gerber files in the description below and selecting the color you want. The finished quality and details of these boards are amazing and will reduce the use of cables in our controller. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. We can solder all the parts into the custom board. First, we will solder the pin headers or you can solder directly the ESP32 board. Now we bend the pins of the joystick and solder them. Then we solder the OLED display and the TRS jack module to connect our controller to the main board. And that's it, we have the brain of our motion controller. Now let's place our controller into the 3D printed case. Place the double sided tape under the joystick as padding, place the bottoms and use some hot glue to hold the controller inside the case. And it's done, now we can program our controller. First, connect the controller using a micro USB to USB cable to your PC or Mac. Open the Arduino IDE and install the libraries. You can watch my other video where I explain how to install the libraries. Select the ESP DEP board and click on upload. Wait for a couple of minutes and it's done. We can use our 4 axis motion controller to make some amazing videos. Now let's explain how it works. But first, big thanks to all the supporters of these channels on the last video. You can support the channel by becoming a member or buy me a coffee and my page. Please consider to share this project because this is the first part of a series of videos of this controller. The next update of this project video will add face tracking for interviews and hosting videos and more modes like product videography and photography, smart time lapse, and even a zip light controller for epic landscape time lapses. So consider to subscribe so you won't miss the updates. To use the motion controller, you have three rows of options. The first line, using the joystick, you can move the pan and tilt axis. The pan axis label it as X. You can move it by pressing left or right in the joystick. The tilt axis label it as Y. You can press up or down. The middle button of the joystick will change the row. On the second row, you can press left or right to move the slider. Label it as Z. The up or down button will move the focus model. Label it as E. And the third row will let you change the speed of the motors by pressing left or right and the jog of the movement by pressing up or down. Jog is the unit that the motor will move. It can be 0.1 for a small movement, 1 for a regular movement, and 10 for a long movement. Be careful of selecting 10, as this can move the controller and pull the cables or hit your camera. The right button let us enter the menu and the left one let us exit. To navigate the menu, press up or down. To activate an action, press the middle button of the joystick. Press left or right to increase or decrease the value. The first two actions are set position A and set position B. In a future upgrade, I will add five positions or more. The next actions are move to position A and move to position B. Then we have move to A, then B, or move to A, then B, then again A. We have reset and stops. This will unlock your board for some old 3D printed boards. Power of motors will turn off the motors. Use this function, but remember that if you move the motion controller, you will lose the position saved. Then we have number of photos for a time lapse, interval in seconds for the time lapse, 
and shutter speed. This parameter is in milliseconds and will help you if you are doing long exposure time lapse. Run time lapse will activate the time lapse routine. If you want to cancel the time lapse routine, press the left button. Beep is the buzzer sound if installed inside the controller. It's on by default, you can change it to zero to turn it off. Pre-delay is in seconds and will help you as a timer before a movement. The next parameters are to calibrate the motion controller. For our initial configuration, the default parameters are ok, but if you want to use other kind of gears, you can modify the relation of movement with these parameters. This helps us to use bigger motors or gearboxes for a motion controller. Once you choose the parameters, you can press Update Units or Update Acceleration and then press Save Press. I will discuss these parameters in a more detailed firmware configuration video. You can find it in the description below. And the controller has a Wi-Fi option, so just open your Wi-Fi settings and search the Edelchrome network. Enter the password and go to your browser and enter the next address and you will be in an interface to use the motion controller from your smartphone. Thanks for being up to this point of the video. Remember to share this project so it can evolve into a complete budget kit for anyone that wanna go into motion controller video, as many kits are really expensive. Subscribe to support the channel and stay tuned about the second and third part of this motion controller. I'll leave you with some quick examples of this motion controller.